top five questions for the Big 12 this weekend. This is the conference that is going to have the most move, like games that could move the needle, I think, every week uh, when it comes down to it, because there are just so there's, so, there's not so much division. Now, there are tiers right now, but the, like, especially the teams that are in that third tier that can just play season ruiner could, could move the needle for somebody else easily every week because again so not much um separation number five who writes the ship first kansas or baylor uh baylor will have their starting quarterback back it does not look like kansas will but jason bean will be playing his third game in it well second and a half game in a row uh and look he's not bad uh the baylor defense needs to get its teeth back uh the kansas defense needs to get teeth uh we'll see this is going to be an offensive uh back and forth but this one is um this one is a kind of a season changer for each team uh where are you going to be you know fighting for six and six or are you going to be maybe in there not contending for the the title game just yet that a lot of other things would have to happen but are you going to be uh relevant towards the end of the year uh yeah uh, somebody's getting their third big 12 loss and they'll be out basically um for all intents and purposes i mean i don't think ku is going to regain their stride that they had earlier this year and we don't know when Jalen daniels is coming back uh you know jason beans good enough to win the game this weekend but i just i have to believe baylor wins this game like mm -hmm. if they don't win this game guys i mean seriously yeah. Um, I just I have to believe that they're they're going to because outside of that it would just be a disappointment that no one could have seen uh, forthcoming. Uh, no matter how optimistic or pessimistic you were this off season about you know what they were rolling in into this season with, but yeah, I mean somebody's gonna feel great about just getting a win coming out of this game on Saturday, and and the other side's going to to realize that yeah the writing's pretty much on the wall, and just making a bowl game's gonna be a real struggle for whoever doesn't win this game yeah number four well who, for baylor if they yeah. don't, i should yeah. say yeah who will play defense in the west virginia tech game because these are two teams that uh struggle on that side of the ball look it's in lubbock you know leaning more uh towards tech in that one in that regard and tech's defense might be a little bit better but this should be i mean these two games here will be shootouts i don't think any of the rest of them may be shootouts in the shootout sense but uh, i think this one will be uh, probably a lot like the baylor west virginia game last week if west virginia is on their p's and q's on offense yeah i need to clarify my stumble there if baylor's win this game they're in big trouble as far as making a bowl game ku just needs one win yeah. so they're they're right there now that still could be dicey if they lose this weekend yeah um but but yeah i want to clarify there but yeah uh I, yeah, I think we'll see some defense played this weekend, but I would definitely lean more towards a shootout. I mean, Tech's talking about playing all three quarterbacks if, you know, uh, if Tyler Shuck's actually available. At last word, I haven't seen whether he's been cleared or not, but we'll definitely see Donovan Smith back, and we'll definitely see Baron Morton, so they'll at least play two guys. Um, you know, West Virginia – haven't probably doted on them as much as Mountaineers fans would like, but that was, as I tried to explain to some people, not so much anything against them. It was more or less against Baylor, the fact that we know them so well and saw what they let slip through their fingers last week. But I give the Mountaineers a lot of credit for, you know, making some very timely plays and, and you know, being able to, you know, basically create some, or I guess they were given a little bit of money, but able to take that momentum and run with it and, and finish Baylor off when they had the chance to. So, yeah, I think we'll see some defense, but I would, definitely lean more towards shootout than the defensive struggle in this one number three can texas win a true road game that that's a test for them look they've played on the road already they played in 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 dallas uh and i know that's not a, it's a neutral site game but this one this will be a little different it's not going to be half the stadium cheering for you it's going to be those paddles and all that and oklahoma state uh, coming off a loss a team that's probably not going to lose two games in a row too many times so this is a huge test for texas um leaning that way in our picks right now just because I don't know what the deal is with Spencer Sanders and even if he plays if he's still banged up I saw what that was at the end of last week but this is going to be a tough one for Texas and a tough place to play um, it was night and day what, what he was in the second half compared to what he was in the first quarter and a half yeah yeah and if he doesn't have a shot or something to get him going I don't know I'm not trying to suggest that but I he's, he's obviously not He's not full throttle. I mean, are we even really hiding the cortisone, or not the cortisone, but the the numb shot that yeah. the guys get? I think we're all pretty. I mean, the Holly was kind of exposed at this yeah. point, so yeah, I'm sure he'll get a little numbing shot, and they'll see what he can do. But yeah, I'm not I'm not real high on Oklahoma State at the moment, just because of that uncertainty. Um, 
And yeah, can Texas win? I think absolutely they can, and I'm kind of leaning in their direction right now. I don't think they were all that impressive last week, uh, but I think you give Iowa State a lot of credit for just being better than people realize they are because their record stinks, but defensively they're still very good and hard to score against, and I think UT ran into a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, I absolutely think they can go win this weekend, and I, I'm almost expecting them to at this point, but we'll see how I feel by tomorrow when we're making this the pick. The line it went from one to six or five or six. Pretty quickly, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and probably Sanders. the Spencer Sanders yeah, for sure. type information. If, if you told me that there was a tax on touchdowns in the state of Iowa, I would believe oh. you. Oh. And, and, <laughs> and that's the reason. Like, listen, guys, we can't afford touchdowns. So you can get one, maybe two. I mean, I, I can respect old school football, but, like, they're taking it beyond. Like, that's not just old school football. That's just bad offense. But, yeah, um, Iowa State, that – and that was another one that slipped away. But, yeah, I think Texas has a bit sharper performance this week knowing what's on the line. Yeah. Uh, number two, can TCU force Adrian Martinez to pass more? And, look, sub-question to that, uh, even if they do, what if it works? You know, like that that's one thing that everybody said. Now, nobody's been able to really do that to Adrian Martinez throughout the year. But if they can, I'd, I'd be interested to see what happens. But that doesn't mean it wouldn't work. It just means that – you know, when you don't have to pass the ball like Kansas State hasn't had to do, then you don't. He threw uh, 31 passes against Tulane. 21 of 31, 150 yards, not much per pass, per attempt. Uh, threw a touchdown, no, not a very good quarterback rating, but he yeah. did throw the ball 31 times. He ran the ball just 42, and which is was, normally a pretty good number. What was the end result there? They lost the game. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. lost a low-scoring yeah. game to two lanes. You, but, I mean, I don't think by any means this can get misconstrued that he's a bad passer or whatever. No. It's just that the more he puts the air, the more of a chance that this little perfect turnover streak that he has with no interceptions goes out the window. And especially against a feisty TCU secondary who's got our guy, Trevious Hodges Tomlinson, among others back there, uh, they can make him pay. Um, so I'm just very curious because I don't know a ton about the TCU defense in terms of what to believe as far as how good they are because the offense is getting so much of the credit so far. But they're good. It's just that, yeah, if they can stifle in the Martinez uh, the Martinez Vaughn duo, then can Malik Knowles make enough plays for, for K-State to score points while the defense keeps Max Duggan and company in check? Like, that's where... You know, if this gets into a shootout, I don't love K-State's chances is where I'm coming from. But yeah. Martinez could win a shootout. It's just that you'd prefer they just could have effectiveness running the football because that's what they do best. Yeah. And number one, what QBs will play? We already know that Blake's shaping well. Uh, we know that Daniels probably won't. Um, Spencer Sanders kind of up in the air. Uh, Craig just mentioned they could play all three quarterbacks at Texas Tech. That all depends on Tyler Shuck's yeah. health. If he gets cleared, then he's going to play according to Joey McGuire. And we know Baron Morton's playing. We know Donovan Smith's playing. So, yeah, it's just a matter of what they find out from the doctors. Yeah, so which QBs are going to play this week it could certainly affect uh, a lot of these games. Of course, Shapin is going to play, and, uh, and Jalen Daniels is not. Um, well, I don't think he is, but he's been seen at practice, according to reports. I think that's more – subterfuge yeah, I don't anything. think he's been like practicing but I guess yeah. he's been spotted um but yeah like we said earlier Jason Bean's capable of beating this Baylor team um but you know I I would hope that Baylor's gonna have a little bit of a gut check here um because if not there's no more remaining really the rest of the way that would just be some some nice potential wins but but nothing big in the, in the grand scheme of things so this Baylor is important Baylor does not have an identity no, they, they really don't, and KU's was Jalen Daniels for the most part, but I think that they've reacted pretty well, even though they've lost a couple in a row now. Um, this league really has turned into a who can have the healthy quarterback or who has the best yeah. backup quarterback, and you saw Texas be able to handle not having Ewers there for a little while. You know, even though they didn't stay perfect, uh, Tech jumped up and, and bit him, obviously, and Alabama bit him, but... Uh, outside of that, Hudson Card played really well, and he's played well enough that they're in a position right now where they're still very much in this race. You look at Tech, and they've been able to kind of they, – they didn't just fall off a cliff because Tyler Shuck got hurt or because Donovan Smith got hurt. Baron Morton could All three of create them an productive. argument to, yeah. like, being the guy now. So, uh, yeah, but having a quality backup quarterback, that, that matters in this league and has mattered a lot already. All right.